Hello. This is Nam. I thought I would try and do something different this time and walk you through a scene I just added to a podu. Uh, maybe you saw it on my Twitter. If you didn't, this is it. Skipper in motion, and I uh, get a good a lot of good reactions on it. I thought maybe it would be interesting to show you how I did it. So this is it in uh, Unity. Uh, but first, we will have to go to Cinema 4D because I don't know if you can see it, but uh, in the clip just now. But there's a ground breakup effect that I put together. And I wanted to show you how I did that first. And that's over here. I uh, just animated a dynamic system, which is these, this collection of uh, clumps, I'm calling them here. Let me see, let me just uh, disable shit here. I will have to remember to enable all of it. I modeled four clumps, not in blocks this time, just in uh, Cinema 4D, because that was just a little quicker, large one, small one, another small one, and a medium one. I do the small one twice, so it appears more often. I threw those into a, a cloner, in grip mode. Oh, right, because I had cached it. Oh, no. Oh, the cache is uh, wasted now. If you can see what happens, it's just a grid of clones, randomized. I put a random effector on that, so they uh, have a bit of, uh, uh, well, randomness. Um, and put a dynamics tag on that. Set that on apply tag to children, so everything will, uh, every clone that gets generated will be handled as a uh, dynamic object. Let me see, top level, this one. Uh, the rest is, I think, not very interesting, except for the Self collisions should be off because I can't make sure that they don't intersect together. And because from this viewpoint, you won't see what happens exactly. So I just thought that these kids interact with each other. But let me have a floor object here, which is just a collider. I added two cubes to the sides so they wouldn't spread out too much. And that resulted, let me see. This. And now I'm not sure if this is a cached animation. No, nope, that's not cached. <laughs> Most time actually went into modeling this shape. Uh, you see, because that's what uh, dictates the exact behavior. So it's not the exact ship. I modeled the bit in front. So it starts by pushing things upwards and then things sideways, and that led to more or less this here, which I didn't like enough. As you can see, there's a lot of friction, so the uh, objects get uh, uh, gets to a steady state relatively quickly. There's no gravity on this at this exact moment because I turned that off. If I turn that on, 
gravity is actually just a uh, object that pushes the things down when they get off the ground but as soon as they are below this plane i don't want them to bounce around too much so i restricted my gravity to this box here and in this box below uh, it's set to invisible i added some extra friction so they would uh, get to a steady state as quickly as possible now I thought this isn't too interesting. I missed a bit of up and down motion, so let me stop the um, animation for a bit. Um, I added a cloner of cubes below just to create which are set to only be collider. Uh, well, I don't know what the exact settings here are really, but it's a question of adding a simulation tag that sets to collider body, and then it presets everything correctly here. Um, added some randomization to them, and then just, um, let me see, where is that thing? Right, the traveling form, that's just the ship shape. There's an effector on that that pushes them upwards. Uh, let me see. As you can see, together with the ship, it puts the, pushes the blocks through the floor, giving it some extra chaos in the process. So that ended up looking like something that we will only see if I use animation just a little bit of extra chaos I then bait that just cached it if you are here bake objects I think I need to rebake it let me just uh, rebake the thing after that I don't know if this is necessary but I put a uh, MoGraph cache on this thing, baked that as well. Because what happens then is that you just can just uh, copy it out into a new scene, and that will just play the animation. I had some troubles uh, getting a copy paste working with only the uh, Dynamics cache, so I added a, a MoGraph cache to it as well. Set this to two hundred. And that's my animation of a piece of floor getting broken up by the ship, as you can see. So this is what I uh, exported out as an FBX to Unity. So let's switch over and let me look it up. Uh, I would have put that in effects, I guess. Hmm. Uh, I lost it. Oh, okay. Is it here? Nope. Model. Not skipper. Ah, I put it over here. And I just added a single animation from 0 to 200. And it imports just fine. Only thing I messed with in here is the scale factor. I put it at three so it would come in somewhat huge um i'm gonna save the scene just to be certain that i don't save over what i have now because it's a little spiffy let me see this is mud skipper I just put a big x at the end it's my new scene then let me hide the fog for a moment can i find the fog So now it's really the scene is really falling apart now, but at least you can clearly see what happens here. So here's your uh, clump animation. Let 
see there are one, two, three, four of those fellows in the scene. I took care to not have too many big pieces around here, around the uh, garden set, because I wanted you to be able to at least view it from, say, around this area here without getting uh, swallowed with, by the ground. Um, what's next? Well, of course, I had to make a small system that plays its animation as the boat moves through it. So I added this here, break up ground effect script. This is the uh, animation uh, as it comes out of the FBX. There's an animator on that. I will show you. It's really just no biggie. Just the animation playing out. And the magic happens in this script. Let me open that up. I don't think I talked you through the code yet, so I don't know if I can. But let's try, right? I'm just checking my time. This is really uh, all there is to it. I have a target transform that will be something in the ship. I have a start and an end transform that will be just uh, transforms or uh, empty game objects in the scene that define where the animation should start when the ship is over there should be at frame zero if the ship is over there we should be at frame uh well what was it 200 or in normalized time uh time one reference to the animator and a string for the script state i call it script state here but i filled in here that the state that i want to scrub is this one because this is the animation i want to uh scrub through when uh, the ship travels through the uh, blocks. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, get some blood back over here. So simply put at frame zero, I really wish I could turn this for off, but if uh, when the ship starts entering the blocks, we should be here and we scrub through the state with the speed of the ship. So it ends up here. I'm just uh, calculating a phase here, getting the distance from, well, this is a help function of mine that projects uh, a position in world space on a line segment between these two uh, points in space and the results of this function is a point on that line segment. I don't calculate the distance between that and the start position. If it's zero, we're at zero. If it's, oh, let's say, oh, I, uh, what do you say? If it's at this point, it should be one. So I have to divide that by the distance between the start and the end, because that's the old length of the path the ship would take. And this is the um, points where the ship is at that moment. I clamp it to between zero and one, set every frame, because it's in update, the animator speed to zero, just to be sure, and play the scrub state uh, layer zero to that phase mode phase just goes from zero to one. So that's my usual way of uh, uh, playing a scrap animation. Just play, full play, but set the speed to zero. So I don't know if it's possible to then show you how it works. Well, I could, I could of course check out where the mud skipper is. Let me see. This here, boat route, is the point that measures how far 
the boat is uh, through the uh, rubble. So I'll just remove, uh, I've disabled this animator and start the scene playing so we can see what happens. I hope, I will check that the sound isn't too, too loud. Well, I'm actually with my VR set inside the caravan now, so it shouldn't be too loud. Let me see. Oh, it doesn't pick up the audio from my uh, Oculus right now, so that's fine. You're hearing nothing. Can I switch this? Let me not switch this during play. No, I uh, I never did that. I don't know if that will work. So you will have to uh, remain in silence for now. But as you can see, I can now move this target. Hold on. I'm going to disable the, uh, the effects for now. Oh, hold on. You should be on. You should be off. Yeah. So the bo boat simply gets animated going through. And it gets uh, this point location gets measured for this breakup block. I shouldn't select that because I'm always selecting a single block and have to close it down. This is the first breakup group between this point and that point. When the ship is there, the animation ends because there's some animation going on when the ship is still traveling through it. Things coming to a rest and stuff. So, take the boat, drag it through, and it just plays that dynamics animation. Here it reaches the next bit of breakup, goes through that, and you see that stuff break up. I put that below the ground so it doesn't show at first, but as the boat starts, the scene when it's over here, it's okay that you see these one already breaking through the floor plane. So there's the next one. There's one over here. Oh, one moment. Sorry about that. I had a late evening uh, doorbell. Uh, that really, really never happens. <laughs> so, of course, it happens in the middle of my recording. But it doesn't matter. Uh, I was just walking you through the breakup of the ground. Here's the last one. That's, oh, that's this group. So it's already finished when it arrives here. All right. Well, that isn't too hard. Okay, let me stop. And then I simply animated this boat. Oh, let me see. Gave it a travel animation. Uh, hello? Okay, my interface is a bit slow. So there's a travel animation that just animates uh, the point of the route. I call this the route from there to there. I put that in boat travel anim controller. That's just the base layer. Oh, ignore these one that was for testing. Uh, these can actually go now. Ah, no, let me undo that. I may, might need them later. Uh, that's this animation. And I had another animation you can see. And that's just this pivot here. And that's just a very very slight waggle of the ship, so it's as if it's moving on waves a bit. Just two axes and a bit of position. That adds a lot of uh, extra, and that's on a second layer. That's just because this is just one pivot that doesn't get animated in this. I can just put this uh, layer on override because it will only override something that isn't animated anyway in the base layer so that all works and then i added a very simple uh, 
auto rotation script to the screw here. I usually do looping rotations with just a script because then I'm certain the rotation won't fuck up if you go over 330 degrees and stuff. Really simple. Hello. Ah, sorry. Close opens. Have an axis, have an angle per second value. And just transform, rotate, axis, angles per second, times, time, delta, delta, time. So that just stays rotating. As you can see. And now I forgot to turn on the animator. You always have to turn on your animator. So, that's the motion. Um, Actually, I am almost through because the rest of the scene was, of course, already present and accounted for. Um, I added a few nice particle systems. Here's a big dust particle system that just, uh, let me show you the shape, just a line along the uh, full length of the ship that uh, warps out these. Uh, What's it? Penta? Hexagons? I use hexagons everywhere, I think. Uh, they just slowly fall to the ground. That's just a matter of... Oh, well, the gravity modifier is just at O0 here. Uh, anything special here? Not really. Color over lifetime just to fade from uh, transparent to visible to transparent. Size over lifetime does something. Uh, nope. Oh yeah, sorry, I need to open it up. This looked good, so I kept it. Rotation over lifetime. I am not sure if this is the way to, the best way to add rotation. I usually do it like this. I think you can always also do something with minimize rotation and start rotation here, but I'm not sure. Uh, let me see. I added another one of those over here at the uh, rotor here. The oh, the screw rotor. What is it? And that's just the dust. I added another one that spews out little boxes. Those rotate a little faster. But it's almost the same. Big thing here is, of course, that I am uh, rendering a mesh here instead of a billboard. And set that to the cube with the cube. Uh, the same material as the dark floor has. And as the rubble here has. And I am keep selecting these babies. I shouldn't really do that. So, that was the... Well, I call this Gruis. That's a Dutch word for rubble, I guess. And I added two extra of those over here. Just at two sides of the uh, bow wave, so to say. One over here, one over here. Why does the shape keep disappearing? Weird. Uh-huh. I like this better than putting one in the middle here, because then it's too much like that you see the cubes uh, appear from the fuselage of the ship, which I didn't like. So that looked fine. They, these just uh, travel with the ship. Um, I think that's everything with regards to animation. The rest of the scene was in place, really. So. Well, I added some extra sound effects. I already had a huge sound effect over here. Oh, can I select that? Let's see. Hello? Hello? Yes? Ooh, the ship is huge. Ah, right. There's a Digging sounds when I just got off of free sound. Um, 
This one. Looks like come out. Come through. Yeah. It's one of the uh, Creative Commons uh, free, completely free, royalty free sounds. Uh, and slow that down. Well, this I sped up, it seems. Okay. Funny. Well, I, uh, I messed with the uh, uh, pitch and volume settings over here because I use this one here and here. Oh, here and here. I see now that for this one and this one, I used a reloop uh, version. That's just something I threw, uh, took through a, what's it called, uh, audacity to make a bit of a better loop because it was too much similarity between the other sounds. You heard the repeats, some sounds repeating too much. So I relooped it a little. And I don't think there's too much special about these sounds. They're fully 3D. Doppler at zero, so you can teleport around without uh, the Doppler kicking in every uh, every time. Uh, nice spread. Oh, right. I, oh, yeah, I used the audio spatializer for outdoors on all these sounds on the ship. So they spatialize correctly. And... I added a low pass filter to all of them, I guess. Oh, that's funny. This one seems I kept as the original, and the others I gave the low pass uh, frequency here a curve. So when you're close, there's almost no, the, the, the cutoff frequency of low pass is high. So you get the full sound and when it moves away, it gets cut off. The high frequencies get cut off farther and farther. So it feels like a far away sound more. And that's it. Yeah. Sounds simple. It's a day of work. <laughs> it's not that simple, but it's fun. You can just throw stuff like this into the scene, see what works, see what doesn't, you can have something yeah, you're quite satisfied with as a result. So, I hope that was of any use. I uh, guess I'll leave it at that. I'm breaking my mind to see if there was something I forgot to include. I think I uh, went by all the points that are interesting. Huh. So, I hope that was uh, helpful to you, and I'll uh, see you in some next video. Take care. Bye-bye.